Welcome into the Michigan Football Report, folks. We're back again. I know some of you guys have been saying, James, do more episodes. So we are hooking you guys up on the Michigan Football Report after Friday's big time episode talking about the game overseas and the sick or injured uh, starting cornerback. Want to get today's show started with our new presenting sponsor, MyBookie, giving you a hookup of the year for football season. A large Michigan Jordan brand maize jersey, the one I own, it's awesome, or the Harbaugh Game Day Jordan shirt. Please note, the jersey only available in large, so if you need a different size, you got to opt for the... Uh, Got to opt for the uh, game day shirt, but we are hooking you up. If you get started with my bookie to bet on sports, sign up and deposit chatsports.com slash go blue. When you do send us an email, promo chatsports.com, and we will get some info so you can pick your Jersey or game day shirt, hooking you up for the 2019 football season. We've got six rumors to get into surrounding this Michigan football program. And number one is that lying, cheating SOB, Nick Saban, trying to talk trash about the, the wonderful uh, future national championship winning coordinator, Josh Gaddis, blaming Gaddis and some other coaches for the loss. I think Nick Saban needs to take some, uh, some uh, turns looking in the mirror uh, for, for the absolute uh, domination they, they uh, kind of suffered at the hands of Clemson in the national title game. But three hardball heads on this one. Came out of SEC Media Days. It's going to jump in in case any of you guys missed what Shady Saban was saying about Michigan's OC, Josh Gaddis. All right, so here's a little timeline, Gaddis, and basically what Saban is going to say, we're going to show you the quote here in just a second, is that after the SEC title game, the month of December, when Mike Loxley uh, got a job as a head coach and other guys were looking for head coaching jobs or coordinator jobs and going to the pros potentially like their D coordinator did and all that stuff, is that uh, these coaches were checked out and couldn't get the team ready. So there is some validity though, right? There is some validity. I'm not saying that, that those three Harbaugh heads uh, you know, necessarily mean he's right, but just that obviously gas is included in this pretty likely. January 7th, on a Monday night, uh, Clemson blew out Alabama in you know, two and a half days, if you really think about it, because that game didn't end until 1 in the morning Eastern time. Two and a half days later, Josh Gaddis has accepted the Michigan offensive coordinator job. So he basically landed on the 8th or the 9th, probably the, you know, I'm guessing the 8th, late, uh, in, in Alabama, woke up the next day, took a call with Jim Harbaugh, accepted the job, and was announced in the 10th. So some validity to this, for sure. Uh, certainly a quick turnaround, which I think was needed for Michigan to be able to uh, to land him. Uh, but if you look at that last bullet point there, last line, 2000 offseason, Alabama had a huge turnover like they have many offseasons. Five of their 10 assistant coaches uh, headed to new jobs. One to uh, the NFL with the Browns, one to Maryland to be the head coach, and then uh, a few co offensive coordinator jobs uh, floated around there. So Alabama blaming the loss on their former coaches, at least Nick Saban is. And if you want to recap of what that domination looked like, uh, working with the producer, uh, who's a Clemson grad, bleeds uh, Clemson orange and, uh, and, and, I don't know, dollar signs. Is that their other color? Because they're clearly paying their players. If you believe the blog boys and the haters out there, I, I think Dabo is a, is a wonderful man. Don't believe any of that. But two national titles in the last three years. For Clemson over, you know, both wins over Alabama. Absolutely destroyed them really after the, an amazing first quarter uh, for both teams. Clemson just dominated from there with Trevor Lawrence, the first true freshman quarterback in over 30 years to win a national title. Here's that quote from Saban. Basically, I'll paraphrase him. We had guys who want to be head coaches in different places. It takes a special person to stay focused on what they have a job, when they have a job to do. And they, you know, when, when there's something else waiting for them and they've got more responsibility, more staffs, new jobs. So that is the word from Saban uh, on, on, you know, the, the five Alabama coaches kind of blaming them for that loss to Clemson. I think Nick Saban needs to take a little responsibility. If he's going to continue to run his program like he has, he's going to, you know, he is, he's going to have coaches continue to have this coaching turnover. And uh, he's going to have to deal with this because he's done it many years in the past and had national title wins. So this is nothing new for Nick Saban. All right, want to ask you guys before we get into our next five Michigan football rumors, subscribe on YouTube. I told you in the show on Friday, we got to get to 5,000 and the clock is ticking, but many more than 5,000 of you will watch this. So just a few of a small fraction, we need another 2,000 some change subscribers, or they might turn this into like a Michigan State or I don't know, a Big Ten basketball channel. I don't know. I'm fighting the bureaucrats for you guys. So subscribe today. 
or the channel might go away. I don't know what to say. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm groveling to you, the, the wonderful Michigan football audience. Keep it moving because I asked something from you, you know, to subscribe to the channel. Now you get to boast your fanhood below. Type Go Blue in the comments so all those lurkers from Ohio State, Notre Dame, Michigan State fan bases and coaching staffs likely know that Michigan football will run this channel now and into the future because of you, the wonderful audience. Keep it rolling. Nico Collins dominating in seven on seven. And there's a little bit of a, a backstory to this or kind of a side uh, story. Uh, some others have put this out uh, talking about seven on sevens. I did a little digging, asked around. Uh, pretty verified, three harbor heads, pretty likely on this one, Nico Collins. I almost give it four hard by heads, but uh, you know he is in the seven and sevens, non-coaching uh, observed, but certainly uh, the rumors get out there what's going on with the wide receivers, defensive backs, linebackers playing seven on seven. Nico dominating, and one of the reasons he is dominating in seven and sevens is not just because he has the potential to be a great player, but Donovan Peoples-Jones not participating at least so far in the month of July. We know he sat out the spring ball, didn't make the trip overseas, so keep an eye on that DPJ story. He hasn't participated in 7-on-7, seven seven, so Nico Collins has been really the true returning starter that has participated in there. You see his stats from last year, 38 catches, 6 touchdowns, and a handful of yards, big time downfield threat. I want to show you guys my 2019 wide receiver depth chart if you haven't seen it before in a previous show. I think Michigan's going to be in a four wide receiver set uh, a lot of times, but when they go to a three wide receiver set, wide receiver one, Collins, and Tariq Black, I believe, will be the outside guys. You'll see DPJ, Donovan Peoples-Jones, more in the underneath role, though he can split out and go deep, as we saw last year. Mike Sainristol, true freshman, and Giles Jackson will get the uh, the, uh, the play in the slot role. So what do we expect from these four players in 2019? Alicia, we just threw in a new Mike Sainer still photo there. That's fine. We'll clean that one up. Uh, Nico Collins, I've got him leading this team in yards and then, of course, touchdowns that we've showed you, uh, that we've shown you in the past. But I think Diamond Peoples-Jones, because of the underneath stuff, will actually lead in catches, although won't have as many yards per catch. So that's why Nico Collins will be your leading receiver. Treat Black, Two years straight, missing majority of the season with foot injuries on opposite foots. So I know some people want to throw out there that Treat Black's a future NFL player and all this different stuff, and he showed some promise as a freshman in 2017 through a few games. But he returned last year and didn't do anything. And until I see it, back-to-back -back season injuries, he hasn't played significant football in three years, folks, since 2016. So not expecting him to reach the 1,000 yards or to be one of Michigan's top one or two receivers. Mike Sainer still will get a bunch of underneath stuff uh, and some stuff, you know, screen passes, et cetera, out of the backfield from time to time. That is my stat predictions for the wide receiving crew. And you would know this because I tweeted it out a couple days ago. So make sure to follow me on Twitter. And if you watch the show on Friday, I apologize for, uh, for, for tweeting out about uh, Webster, uh, Lion Sam taking, trying to take a job with the Athletic. They didn't want anything to do with him from what I heard from unconfirmed sources around the internet. But I shouldn't talk about another man's job. So Sam, I apologize. And you guys all know I stomped out that rumor that is just ludicrous about you know marrying his sister. So uh, that's what you get from me on Twitter. Just raw truth on Michigan football. Money back guaranteed at James Yoder. Next rumor up, rumor number three. Jim Arbaugh calls the Michigan football program had, saying that they have the best quarterback room in the country, not just talking about this year, but looking forward. And I'm giving this one an F-A-C-K fact. Did we call it a fact? I think we call it a three Harbaugh. Yeah, whatever it was, I'm calling it a fact now. F-A-C-K, Jim Harbaugh saying that Michigan has the best quarterback room in the country. And I think you got to take into, into, into account not only this year, but in the future, if all these you know, committed guys and, and guys that are on the roster now don't leave early or transfer or decommit. Here's Jim Harbaugh's quote from the Attack Each Day podcast hosted by that bum Ira Wiener tribe from the radio station. We have Shea McCaffrey, Joe Milton, Cade McNamara, and the pipeline is really good as well. J.D. Johnson, four-star uh, 2020 commit, and then J.J. McCarthy, Top 10 player, five-star quarterback in the 2021 class. I can't think of a team in the country who has it better. So let's take a look at my projected depth chart for 2019 season. Although Dylan McCaffrey had a nice spring and really challenged Shea Patterson, it is Shea's team going into 2019. Then you see Joe Milton there at number three. And no inside info on this one, but I think if you're to guess, 
who at some point may be a transfer candidate. I'd say more likely uh, it would be Milton than any of these other guys because I think McCaffrey will be the QB in 2020, 2021. But, you know, maybe McCaffrey has a great year, leaves early after his 2020 season. Uh, Joe Milton could get a couple years. But I don't think Joe Milton will sit the bench for four straight years and take an opportunity to take over the job as a fifth-year senior. Let's take a look at 2020. What does this roster look like? Dylan McCaffrey in his fourth year. He'll be my starter, most likely, I think, barring any unforeseen uh, developments. Joe Milton will be a third-year player. Cade McNamara, this year's freshman quarterback. And then J.D. Johnson, out of the state of Arizona, has never actually started a high school game, to my knowledge at least, was behind five-star superstar Spencer Rattler for the last couple of seasons in high school, but has shown very well in camps and, and things like that over the summer to get a four-star rating. He's coming in in the 2020 class. Take a look at 2021. That's where you got J.J. McCarthy, uh, I think is going to be Michigan's most hyped recruit yeah, you know, since Drew Henson in 1998, by the time he becomes a senior in high school and then gets into Michigan in 2021. So that's what the quarterback room looks like for the next three years. And some people have, you know, said, well, what about Dylan McCaffrey? He should get a lot of playing time. And I think it sounds good sometimes to, to, to you know, hype up the, the backup quarterback folks. But yeah, I remember Shea Patterson led Michigan on a 10 game winning streak last year. Uh, didn't get it done on the road against Ohio State or Notre Dame. But 23 career starts, 45 career touchdown passes for Shea, to zero for Dylan McCaffrey in starts, and two touchdown passes. And I think Dylan has one or two runs. They might have two. One of those called back for a penalty. I can't remember what it was. But this is the uh, the the tail of the tape for these guys. It's going to be Shea, so don't let anybody tell you otherwise out there. But lead me back to a few months, a couple months ago, maybe a month and a half, I tweeted out something about – who, which quarterback do you want to have the ball in your hand? I think the guys I said, pick Denard or pick Chad Henney. I was surprised the results and how much they vary between Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, I think the younger crowd is, is all Denard. Uh, the you know, plus 30 crowd probably is Chad Henney, unless uh, they didn't. But um, And then I think I put one out there, too. It said Denard Robertson versus Shea Patterson, which I also found crazy how many people said Shea when Denard proved it over and over, although they didn't have – the huge team success every year, but he certainly had a lot of game-winning drives. Let me know. Better QB at Michigan. Chad Henney, the all-time leader in passing touchdowns and yards, or Denard Robinson, uh, the second leading rusher in Michigan school history, and a uh, fairly dynamic passer. CH for Chad, DR for Denard, down below in the comments. And if you're commenting, folks, if you're watching this show, we said at the beginning of the show, gotta say it again, just so we overemphasize. Hit that subscribe button, or you're going to come here one day looking for Yoder. Like, I want to know what Yoder thinks about this situation, this game. And it's going to be Dylan Tippett and the uh, and the Oklahoma State report or something like that. So we can't let it happen, okay? It's an anti-Tippett podcast, anti-Tippett show. Get us to 5,000 by August 31st. That's our deadline. September 1 rolls around. we got to go back with the uh, the, the Chat Sports channel and, and, and stand in line with all those uh, – those, you know, those creators there. So that is the request from me to you, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Next rumor up, Mozzie Smith. I'll give you a little insight, a little uh, feedback, Mozzie. Just embrace Maisie. Call yourself Maisie. You'll be a Michigan legend uh, in name, at least, for your entire career. But he has slimmed down four Harbaugh heads, F-A-C-K. The true freshman, defensive tackle, top 150 player in the country, expected to make a big impact this year because Michigan, frankly, doesn't have much depth in the uh, in the secondary. So he enrolled early in January. I'm sorry, in the secondary in the defensive line. He enrolled in uh, in January as an early enrollee and came in with what I've been told and, and, and someone sent to me is uh, admittedly poor nutrition and you know workout habits uh, from that perspective. But gets in the uh, the room with Michigan's strength and conditioning staff, gets a little bit better diet, and he has apparently dropped more than 30 pounds down around near just over 300 when he was up at 340 as an 18-year-old, you know, halfway through his senior in high school. So four Harbaugh heads on Mozzie Smith slimming down. He is going to be counted on. Him and his classmate Chris Hinton are going to have a lot of young guys in the two deep on the, in the defensive line this year. Let's take a look at this second or this defense. I keep saying secondary. No secondary. Defensive line depth chart. 
for this season coming up. Aiden Hutchinson, I think, will be the star of the show, at least the guy getting uh, the, the Chase Winovich uh, fan love. He'll make a lot of sacks, make a lot of big plays. Uh, Quiddy Pay, a nice, a uh, nice pr promise. Look out for Mike Dana coming into Central Michigan. Uh, pro football focus, whatever the you know you want to give them any credit for. Call him a first team All American in the D line with a few uh, other NFL draft picks last year. Transferred to Michigan for his fifth year. Keep an eye on Ben Mason. But Mozzie Smith there, that nose tackle, might see some D tackle spot wherever they need him. He is slimmed down, better condition uh, athlete than when he came in. So uh, I, I take this as good news that uh, that Smith has slimmed down. But want to make sure you guys know that I'm still I'm, I'm, I'm pushing you guys. I make the account private. I get 50 followers. But if I don't make it private, you know, no one's clicking the follow button. They're just going and reading the posts and the stories. I'm putting all kinds of rumors and stuff out there. Get us to 1,500. So I've got this esteemed Michigan you know, media member from the Detroit area that wants to become the new part-time co-host. You guys will love this guy. He's a real character, some great hair. Get us to 1,500 subscribers, and you won't have to, uh, you know, beg me afterwards. James, what was the story about? I missed it. I didn't, you know, follow till now. Subscribe. Get us to 1,500 at Michigan Football Report on Instagram. And there's been a lot of, uh, you know, contention out there you know, in the media with our politicians about what it means to be an American, who, who deserves to be an American. I don't care about any of that. All I know is I'm an American myself. So if you love this country, if you love the fact that we have football and nobody else does, because that's, you know, we copy USA copyright, you know, copyrighted football. They've got the uh, they've got the patent on it. Nobody else can take it. Type USA if you love this country. If you love that we've got football, and if you don't care about any of the BS that you're seeing on the news now with the politicians, USA below in the comments. I'll get in there myself. And since you're in the USA, I asked this question on last show. Asked it a few weeks. Want to give one more shot so the analytics wizards here can. Uh, can, can fully understand who's watching the show. Do you live in the state of Michigan? I think there's been some great conversations with people in the comments section. People like, yeah, I live in Grand, Grand Haven. And some guys like, me too, let's meet up for a Michigan game. So a lot of community can be come from this question. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Type your city if you want to, or type what city you live, what state you live in now, if it is a no. Fifth rumor, Michigan, the lines are out in these sports books. Uh, we, we started the show telling you guys about our sports book partner for this year and they have put out the line for the Michigan versus Middle Tennessee game for Harbaugh heads on this one F-A-C-K is the word here um, on uh, Michigan being big favorites against Middle Tennessee State where did they go last year eight and five do we say something like that was in the we're in their conference championship game but Michigan is a 30 and a half point favorite more than four touchdowns for this 7 30 p.m. Eastern home opener night game the first home opener night game in school history and Jim Arbaugh has played two night games both on the road in his four years at Michigan in home openers and it doesn't get any easier next year they've got what Washington whether it be a night game I couldn't say at this point but got off to a rough start in 2015 you know valiant comeback but lost to Utah on a Thursday night on the road in Utah crushed Hawaii day game Crushed Florida in uh, in Dallas at Jerry World in a uh, in a you know neutral site 3:30 kickoff and then lost it last year in the night. So this would be a home night game. This would be against Middle Tennessee State, not Utah or Notre Dame. But nevertheless, Michigan big time favorites. The, the sports books, my bookie, think that if you're gonna bet on Michigan to win this game, you better put down a bunch of straight cash, homie. Which leads me to this question. The Supreme Court said it's no longer illegal. Now, it's up to your state to decide what their rules are on it. But do you bet on sports? Because if you don't, I think you should personally because it's a lot more fun. Don't put 500 in a game. Put a 20 spot in a few games. You know, bet on Shea for the Heisman if you want to. Type 1 if you do bet. Type 2 for no. And either way, make sure you go back to the beginning of the show if you didn't see that one or uh, or any of other shows. Take advantage. We'll talk about it uh, here shortly of our my – of our – Bet DS, uh, my bookie jersey or game day shirt giveaway. Uh, we're going to talk about it here in just a second. One if yes, two if no. Last rumor does Michigan have the sixth best national title odds? Well, you know, people are talking this one. What the hell does anybody know on this stuff? But the odds are kind of coming to fruition uh, in the world of sports, college football for this season. A lot of NFL stuff out there, over, under, who's going to win the Heisman, who's going to win the NFL MVP, etc. Um, and the latest 
national championship odds have come out just as we went live to uh, to, to, to record this show. And Michigan is now the sixth highest odds is the sixth highest odds to win the national title. Let's take a look kind of the top five here. No surprise, Clemson the favorite to repeat. Alabama, Georgia as the third. Ohio State, although not favored to win the Big Ten, at least by the media, is number four under first-year coach Ryan Day. And then it's Oklahoma at plus 1,400. What does that mean? You put 100 in Oklahoma, they win it all. You win 1,400. It's pretty simple uh, math there. And these are the schools, those four or five right there. They've basically been in the college football playoff or right there the last three, four, five years. So that should be no surprises. But these teams here, Michigan number six, plus 1,600 odds. You put 100 down, Michigan wins the title, you get 1,600 bucks. You put 10, you get 160. Same math. And it's a big drop off. Texas and Florida at plus 2,800. Notre Dame at plus 3,000. Very difficult schedule. LSU, they've got to play Alabama. They've got to play Texas AM. They've got to play uh, all the schools in the SEC West. So plus 3,300 for Coach O. And what I believe will be his third season there, second season there, whatever it is. That is the top 10. So the sports books think Michigan has a very legitimate chance to win the national title, at least in the grand scheme of things. And if you want to bet on these, you can bet on them right now and get rewarded to do so my bookie is our sport presenting sponsor you go to chatsports.com slash go blue i forgot to even say this at the beginning of the show you put your money down they'll double your money in your account and us here at chat sports will send you a free michigan football maze jersey in size large only or the size of your choice in the harbaugh game day shirt that you see pictured on the right side of your screen you sign up and make a deposit yeah, put a credit card down make your first deposit double your money Email us, we'll get some info for you, and we will mail out a jersey or a shirt of your choice based on the ones you see there in the picture. Chatsports.com slash go blue, and the promo code is go blue. Make sure to use that to get credit. Last question for you before we, uh, we, we go off into the sunsets uh, on this show. Will Michigan make the college football playoff? You saw the odds to win the national title. I'll have to look at what the odds are on actually making the playoff. I'm sure they're like, you know, four to one or something like that, given if they win the Big Ten. Uh, you know, it's pretty likely they have a good chance to make it into the playoff. But will Michigan make the college football playoff in 2019? Uh, really, the, the, you know, not even, I guess they've been close to the last three years, but uh, but it's been a tough struggle if you're a Michigan fan in the postseason for, the, for quite a long time. So will they make the college football playoff in 2019? Answer below. Want to see what you guys think. Thanks so much for watching the Michigan Football Report. If you want to keep watching shows, you want to check out Friday's show, some other shows we've got, we got you hooked up right here. And if you want this channel to exist, please hit that subscribe button right here, okay? Just do it. You've watched the whole show. We'll see you next show. Go Blue.